Hey all here, OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the Mopic Snap 3D. These are a series of smartphone cases that sell for $30 a piece from a Korean startup company. What makes them unique is that it claims to offer 3D stereographic viewing for images, videos, and even games. It applies an interesting lens as well as a proprietary app that uses the cameras on the phones to provide some eye tracking. So the experience is kind of similar to a Nintendo 3DS similar to the HTC Evo 3D that we saw many years ago, and also the Elephone 3D smartphone that we also reviewed just a few months back. So it's kind of the same concept, but now you can use your own flagship level smartphone instead of relying on a much slower or cheaper device or an older device to have a 3D experience. Now it might be a little bit of a novelty, but the case itself at 30 bucks also isn't too expensive. So it can be something that you use just occasionally and the rest of the time it can still protect your smartphone. How it works is basically it's a transparent TPU case, which has a a unique and proprietary kind of lens technology that's engraved very finely into the rubber and when you want to view back 3D content you remove the case and you put it on backwards. Basically you put the case over the display so that uh, you can then have access to that 3D viewing experience. A very cool concept on paper and pretty innovative. And again, it takes advantage of the front-facing camera, especially on the iPhone X, with its depth sensing, if you have one of those flagships, to have more precise eye tracking that uh, provides real-time 3D. All right, so this is the packaging. This version here is for the iPhone 6 Plus, 6S Plus, 7 Plus, and 8 Plus. Basically, any of the Plus models of the iPhone will fit into this TPU rubber-style case, and this is what the packaging is like. And this one here is for the iPhone X. Um, it's, it's slightly more colorful. There are also a few 3D games and titles that are compatible with this case, and there's also a QR code that you can scan to download more content, and the user manual itself. So here's the two cases. This one here is for the iPhone X, and uh, just immediately Immediately, you can tell there's a bit more of a reflective surface. If you look really closely, there's tiny little grooves uh, like a lens that is cutting across the entire surface, making that 3D effect possible. But the case itself has the thickness of a pretty conventional TPU rubber case and has some extra resistance at the corners to provide some shock absorbency in the case that you drop your phone. So it does still act and look like a pretty typical case until when you flip it over. The only giveaway that it's a little different is you see the home button uh, or the touch ID key that is cut off from the back because when you flip it over you still want to access this key uh, to interact with the phone's display. It should be still touch sensitive because it's very slim. Um, anyways, there is a protective film that shows some quick instructions including downloading the My Player 3D app for the App Store to have this be compatible and uh, some settings that you should access on the phone but then we can just peel this protective instruction layer off. There's also what looks like a free screen protector that they give you for the version uh, with the iPhone 6 Plus, but the iPhone 10 version did not come with a free screen protector. So there's also the company's logo on the very edge there, shows a little bit of attention to detail. Again, a very interesting shimmering effect if you look really closely at it. But uh, anyways, as far as being a regular case is concerned, all you need to do is just snap it in. It's completely flexible, so it's not like there's a super rigid uh, back just because it has that lens built on in. You can just fit it in just like on any other rubber case and it works pretty well. It's just a very traditional transparent look. Here's what it looks like on the back. Uh, of course we also have the cutout there for the home button um, as aforementioned. And now it looks like this. So a little bit strange but uh, you can still access say the home key and as far as the touchscreen is concerned it is still going to be touch sensitive since it really is a super slim layer but now we have the additional film on top which can help with that stereographic 3D effect once we access the application, which is here and it's called mPlayer 3D. So if we tap on this right now, it defaults into the portrait orientation. It says start the settings after the th Snap 3D is applied, keep at least 40 centimeters distance from the display. Even on a static image that isn't really meant to be 3D, you can see how there's a bit of a jagged edge. So that lens that they've applied over the screen is definitely starting to distort the image a little bit. It probably isn't going to be as high resolution, um, but overall you can immediately notice something is a little bit different. Anyways, the next setup here it says it needs to access your camera. You can tap on OK, after which point you're able to begin kind of the calibration process and it tells you to not wear any sunglasses or anything to cover up your face. 
So if it's green, it means that it's uh, already located perhaps where your face is supposed to be. And afterwards, it gives you a quick test, such as, you know, what letter do you see on which eye? So that if you shift around, you actually see either A or B. So it completes that setup process by making sure the angle is set up correctly, especially on this iPhone 6S Plus, since it doesn't have that depth sensing camera on the top. So it requires a bit more of manual setup and calibration. So you can adjust all of these things, like the positioning and the angle setup for the first time and then ideally you have to be sitting down or in the relative same position to have access to the best 3D effect because you're calibrated in this particular way. There is quite a bit of attention to detail. Something I just noticed is because now the case is basically on backwards, they put on volume rockers on both the left and on the right. So regardless of how you use the case, the buttons themselves can be still accessed and controlled. So again, a pretty uh, clever symmetrical design going on. The cutout on the front is also large enough so that it doesn't cover up the front facing camera, which is important because that's kind of what it's using to calibrate itself for the first time and also to check on its position when you are viewing back video, for example, during that real-time tracking. So the app is really simple to use. You can tap on this additional settings to recalibrate to the 3D controls, uh, as well as notifications and what resolution you want to be watching the content at. You can also take a look at About, for instance, such as you know what this app version is at and what it's supposed to help you do. On the top, you can tap on here to access My Player 3D's YouTube channel, and the search key here also just allows you to search up other YouTube videos. There's also a few sample YouTube videos directly accessible on the app, which are basically short cuts to pages of content. For example, there's a shortcut here for 3D 360 VR content. There's one for kids, one for educational, one for movies. Scrolling down, you can also see some local content. So videos and files you've stored on your phone's memory can be accessed here, including some samples that you can download on board. So for example, here is a sample video file from the folks over at Mopic, and uh, it will begin very shortly. So now you see this is red. It's because I'm behind the camera uh, shooting this video, and the front facing camera is unable to detect my face. So it says uh, it's not tracking my eyes correctly. But if I kind of step out and look at the camera uh, and look at the phone now, you can see that the icons here have disappeared because it has detected me actually looking at it versus coming back here, you can see it's red again. So there is a warning sign. Um, things that you can control using this app include uh, changing kind of the left and right position of the 3D effect. You can shift it around ever so slightly. You can already see a little bit of that depth uh, sensing, uh, which is appearing on camera as I try to move and shift things around. But the effect is much more apparent in person because, of course, it's impossible to capture 3D content without having at least two camera lenses in the first place. So using a traditional camera here, you can't really see the full extent. But to me, it feels like this Mopic logo is almost something that I can reach uh, just in front of me. Seems like it's floating away in the distance. So there is a real sense of depth and it does actually work. So it's quite amazing. Again, the effect I would say is overall about the same compared to the other 3D smartphones that we've checked out previously, such as the aforementioned HTC uh, Evo 3D from all those years ago. It uh, delivers a kind of similar effect as you start shifting it around. Very similar also to the Nintendo 3DS. So comparing this also with the Elephone 3D smartphone, you can see kind of the same effect, but uh, it has that kind of natural lens with that rainbow patterning uh, built into the display as opposed to built into the case that we've snapped on top of the iPhone here. Although clarity might be a little bit higher on these devices with 3D built in, like the Evo 3D, just because the uh, lens itself is integrated into the display more seamlessly, so you don't really notice as much kind of jagged edges. It feels a bit more smoothed out, but the resolution technically is about the same. But uh, again, there's one more layer of plastic sitting on top of the screen. So other things that you can control using this video playback screen is you can transform it also into a VR mode. So it splits it into two halves. Any of those really cheap plastic kind of VR kits for smartphones will be compatible. You can just put it inside there and then you get the uh, kind of VR effect as well. So you can use that with those glasses as well if you want to kind of immerse yourself and tilt your way around the, the virtual world. If we return to kind of the YouTube functionality, how it works is it's basically opening up again the documentary or whatever section in the browser directly, except it's going to apply uh, kind of a its filter on top of the video, which I'll show you in a moment. But anyways, it's essentially just a website uh, link. And let's say I want to watch this video about a shark. Um, again, it's just gonna be playing back here. And when I want to then have the 3D effect pop up, I just need to tap on this 3D button on the top here. Pressing on that once will kind of render 
under it from Mopic and afterwards it will apply the eye tracking tricks that uh, we saw previously. So the video will be playing back now kind of optimized from the player that uh, Mopic has designed and from here you can adjust again the 3D settings, things like the left and the right 3D, the split screen settings if you want VR turned on, all those things you can control from the app. So it's a playing uh, again from the Mopic uh, optimized app as opposed to from kind of a YouTube directly. And again, the same thing can be said. If you kind of tilt it around, especially in person, the effect is just very much apparent. Even now as I'm tilting it around, you can see this pretty dramatic shifting of colors. Uh, but when you are looking at it in real life, head on, there is a huge sense of depth and it really does feel like objects are floating above the display that you can touch and there are other things in the background which are very far away. It just makes it much more immersive. But anyways, I guess the most surprising thing is it really is functional and it's something that they were able to incorporate using relatively low-cost hardware, just a TPU case and a unique lens technology in addition to an app to provide you with a 3D viewing experience on your iPhone that is actually quite immersive. Not to be taken super seriously, but at the same time provides you with an interesting 3D experience. So a pretty clever and innovative product in my opinion. You can check out more details in the links down below if you're interested. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Mopic Snap 3D, a series of 3D VR glasses-free cases for various smartphones.